Sure. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you're, you're, you're giving the impression that these alternatives are, are desirable, which is great, but also that they're incredibly difficult to implement. And I just, I don't really agree. I think there's quite a few things that we could do quickly. So I'll give you one example, and then, you know, if, if, if it's an area, I would be interested in, in you letting us know what we might expect to see in the near future that is kind of that the council's going to introduce. I spoke to Paul Jenkins at Thamesdown ages ago. It was before the first lot of the vision consultations. And I said, you know, what if we had free buses? What would happen? Would that make a difference or wouldn't it make a difference? Would people, and he said, we would be swamped. People wouldn't use it overnight. I realize free buses cost money in terms of subsidies, but it's not like these things have to be a long time down the road. And it's not like it needs no, to be some long distant future goal. I, I, I think I'll let Rod answer on the money question. Um, I mean, just for example, the introduction of, uh, of uh, free bus passes for uh, 60 over had a significant impact on our budget. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, 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 I mean, just uh, saying, on that point, working with private bus operators, it, they've actually said it is going to become unworkable. They're going to have to pull quite a number of their lines because, do you know how it works? If I'm travelling from Newcastle to Exeter and I get on at Newcastle and I get my free journey, but when it's logged out of Exeter on the return, that authority has to bear the cost and that authority's proportion of the money that comes from central government may be very well, different. Well, some authorities give 33%, some give yeah. 62%. I, I mean, I, I, it's, I, it's quite a complex, I said what it's not says. It's, easy. It is situation. something that Actually, it would be nice to do, yeah, but, but the, the money is... Yeah. Let me just bring Rod in first. Can I answer this in a sort of a, a wider sense? I think one's first. You can do all sorts of things. We could have congestion charging, we could have free buses, we could have whatever you could come up with, we could do it. But it's got to be paid for, right? It's not just a matter of money, because it doesn't matter what you do, it has knock-on effects elsewhere. If you do something in Swindon, which is groundbreaking, sustainable, everything else, but it prices everybody out of existence, for example, I'm not saying that's what you would do, but you could do, I would, you, know. you could then find all of your businesses up sticks and go to Chippenham. Mm. So you have to be very careful about balancing the whole equation. If we've got level playing fields and everybody's doing the same things, then you've got a, which is where central government should come in by putting frameworks in place to make things happen. Mm. But the bus scheme is a classic example of if it was a good idea, which I don't argue giving pensioners free bus travel is a good idea, if it was such a flipping good idea, why didn't central government pay for it? Because what they did was they said, you are going to have it, we'll give you an amount of money, we don't know if that's actually going to compensate you for what it's going to cost, and you, the local taxpayer, can pick up the pieces, and it's cost everybody in this room 1.5% on their council tax. They're now pr proposed, they've now bought in the bus scheme, we've yet to the uh, national bus scheme, we've yet to see the consequences of that and the effect that that could have. If everybody decides to go from Swindon to Bournemouth, we're in trouble. Um, so you've got issues there. I, and now they're talking about free swimming. Just, so, sorry, you know, it was all these things that have got to be balanced. And there are no, in, in reality, all I'm saying is there are no easy answers because there's knock on effects yeah. all over the place. I, okay, I, I, I realise, Dave, that you've had your hand up for a long time, so I want to go back to that. But can I just park and come back to the issue later? But that was just an example that I threw out. And what I really hope that I, I want to see from this meeting and get an understanding of, is what I don't have at the moment through all the consultations is something, some indication from you of what we can expect to see, because that was a rather defeatist, negative... No, well, it, it was, was what, it was what, it was what, it was why we not do something, real. I'd like to know we what need to we do, We need to do, we need to do things, but we've got to be really practical, what I'm saying, we've got to be really practical and focused, A, about what we can do, and what the consequences of what we do do. Because sometimes you don't always understand the consequences of what you do. I'm a bit scared that you were saying we haven't got no, no, I'm not saying anything. No, 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 I'm just saying no, it's no, not no, as easy sorry. as coming up with right. good ideas. This gentleman, that going, gentleman, going back to the bus here. passes, <coughs> we started to use the free bus passes quite a lot. We managed to come from here to Milton Keynes quite successfully. Right. We can't understand, and, and I think somebody needs to talk to the accountants, why they say it costs money, because we occupy empty seats on the buses. But the only cost was the small cost of stopping and starting the bus at the White Hart for us, and the, the infinitesimal amount of additional diesel for carrying another 300 pounds weight on the trip to Oxford and beyond. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can certainly, um, you know, ask Thames Transport to supply, you know, cost per passenger carry, because 
you know, one or two passengers, yeah, you're right, it's a negligible amount. But then you've got to add on to that uh, the typical cost per passenger. So you do have the maintenance costs, you do have all the insurance costs. Um, yes, still been there for you so I think you've got the administration costs. Yeah, all, the, all those fixed costs have to be paid somehow. And actually what's happened is with the uptake in the, the use, the wear and tear on the vehicles has, has shot up as has the, uh, the fuel. The um, variable cost per extra passenger, that's what's been said, is like, yeah. Did, um, but how, do you, how do you compare that with the less wear and tear on the roads? Because people are not driving, yeah. for instance. You've got to see the whole picture. Mm. People don't look at the whole picture. But, yeah, yeah. People very rarely look at the whole picture. But the British gentleman mm. then, this lady here, and then I saw her hands. I, I commend what, uh, you, what might be sort of developing vision for this new development on the eastern side of town. And, and that sounds great, and it's, it's, uh, I'm very pumped to hear that, that that's the way we're thinking, and that, and that sort of thinking the unthinkable, if you like. However, I might put, put you, and I'll pick up on the point that Gina was making, and that Rod mentioned earlier. We have, unfortunately, uh, for some people, but not by the might I share this view, a bit of a moratorium, well, moratorium on what's going on at Richardson. And by Rod's, what he's just said here, you know, that won't, things won't happen now for a few years, perhaps. I suggest to you that that might be a useful model for you to use, because there is this, you have some thinking time quotes, to introduce some of these things on that particular development. Well, we, 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 we're going to. We're going to. I mean, you know, we, we, Rod, Rod and myself and the planners have, have, uh, have poured over um, yeah, some of the minutiae of, of what we'd like to, to happen on that development. But that, does that go to the thing of, you know, no traffic lights, no road markings? Uh, absolutely, yeah, shared space, the, uh, you know, bicycle parking. I mean, uh, every now and then you'll see a picture come up of, of three metal spikes coming out of the ground, three sort of metal boxes. I actually want those in which we'll start when, when it comes around, you'll see. Because, the, you know, that, those are recycling boxes that are set into the pavement, and they're communal recycling boxes. So you don't have the issue of wheelie bins or recycling. You put your rubbish in these communal boxes, and they're two foot, uh, sorry, uh, two meter cube boxes sunk into the ground. And that's in schools. Yeah, and they can be emptied in seconds. But so are these things actually going to happen? Or yes. are they. Yes, yes. Good. Yeah, well, I think absolutely. you should a little bit more then in that case to actually use that and, uh, as an example of the way that we are thinking. Yeah. Perhaps you're actually not doing yourself credit. Uh, but I, I just think. That no, we're worried about commercial sensitivity. <laughs> something that's really well, okay, but I think, you know, sometime or other. Um, yeah. With your broader vision, that's a bit of a quantum leap. But your yeah. sounds to me that the thinking has gone on already yeah. to to try yeah. and you know get that opinion on your side. Yeah. Well, well, that's, that, that, I, that's, I, I, someone who lives just up the road from me, I'm aware of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, one, one of one of the things is you know there have been a, a lot of changes over uh, you know not just the property market but you know the the, yeah. the way we're we're looking at doing development. Actually, which will stay will probably be the testing ground for a lot of the stuff that we'll be doing in the EDA. And that will include some of the transport measures, so not just within the, the, the uh, development itself, so, you know, having the bus, bus priority lanes and all this sort of stuff, but actually how we try and link it into the town centre as well. So, you know, a, a lot of thinking has gone on there, and there, there still will be, because when we go through the master planning development exercise again, that's when the opportunity for, for all the additional input from you guys and, you know, the rest of the community can actually be pulled in. How, you know, don't get me wrong, houses are going to be built there. Let's just make yeah. sure that the best down ones that we're building in Swindon at that time and then build upon that. The state has been waiting very patiently. 